Yeah, so I have a sweet potato story. Sweet potato story. The, the, the discovery of the sweet potato, and it's called patata. Uh, originally, the sweet patata story. And they, uh, they didn't have a word for sweet. So, uh, but it turned into a sweet patata because it's the first one they discovered in South America. So it's the story about, I have been meditating and doing yoga and thinking about the history of the 1400th century and getting to know uh, oceanography and boat history uh, way back to the first boats of the Nile River and uh, a bit like the Contigi story that a few people know that isn't the first uh, boat but it's uh, similar because it's historical about boats so uh, the story is about Christopher Colon that people all call Christopher Columbus so I want to tell the story pretty quickly uh, to define how he defines the story when I meditate about what's the real story and the real route of Christopher Columbus so he started out in a small village and it wasn't a fi fishing village even like people say but it was a small village in West Italy uh, that he can maybe remember the name of but it's not that important what the name is but some people know what the name is and one big misconception is that he's a Torian, and a Torian is what some people call a Jew nowadays. And it says so in a picture. So I want to clarify that he never went to a synagogue or a Torian uh, church. Uh, and I choose to call it a Torian because it's about the Torah. So he wasn't uh, following the Torah whatsoever. He didn't read the Torah whatsoever so he wasn't mimicking judas and most jews don't mimic judas so it's special that you call it jew because you just call it torian because people just use it to get married but he was born in west italy up in the north of the mediterranean or in the south of europe <clears throat> up near france up near monaco he was born near monaco a bit east of Monaco, a bit west of Italy. And he walked uh, when, I don't know at what age he walked, but uh, some were near the 1400th century, uh, 1400th century, he walked from his village to Barcelona. And I don't know how he got the riff or how he got to know about Barcelona, but he walked to Barcelona. And in Barcelona, he was living and he met um, a woman and he had children with a woman apparently a lot of children with a woman and I don't know if the story is true anyways but it's still a huge story about how the real story was but I don't think it's true but uh, it's still a story I was told and it's an interesting uh, story so he had, had children and uh, went to and went to the harbor and lived near the harbor and saw the the king's ship and got very jealous of the king's ship. Uh, that's a small gallon. And back in those days, if it was compared to uh, galleons, not gallon, but galleons, but it could be called a gallon too, because it could be measured in liters that it was floating to. So it's a small galleon, apparently, what I know of boats, but maybe I'm wrong. But people know what a galleon is, and it's close to a galleon. So he, the king had a small galleon in Barcelona, and he wanted that boat. So he went to the king uh, and walked to Madrid back in those days, and he walked bare feet. And then he met the king, and the king, uh, and he asked for a boat, uh, by the king and the king gave him a coin and it wasn't a gold coin everybody thinks he got a lot of gold from the king he didn't do so he got a bronze or uh, uh, some sort of metal and some would say a close to bronze coin and it wasn't a big coin big coin it was a small coin and then and i've seen coins 
uh, from Greece uh, that are special metal that survived for a long time, but they had a bit of copper in them. So maybe it was a copper coin. I'd seen that copper because they turned blue eventually. But I don't know what metal they used anyway. So then he walked back and he couldn't get the galleon. He was not allowed to get the galleon, but he was allowed to buy a boat by the king. So he walked back to uh, Barcelona. And in Barcelona, he met an Englishman that had bought maybe a used boat or maybe a new boat in England. And we don't know if it was London or it was uh, Torquay <clears throat> or it was up near uh, Cornwall or what harbour it was or if it was from Scotland. But I think it was somewhere on the coastline in South England he bought the boat and it was a trade ship. And everybody thinks it was a huge trade ship, but it wasn't a huge trade ship uh, and it wasn't a galleon and people don't get what a galleon is, but something, it was an old military ship made out of wood, but it wasn't an old military ship. It was a, a 10 meter uh, trade ship that had a stock room that was one meter tall and it didn't have a room to stay in other than the one meter tall stock room that was made for, and it's not sure that it was exactly one meter, but it was around one meter where it wasn't possible to stand up straight. And he was pretty tall in comparison to the other people, even though people think he was small, but he was taller than the rest of the people, maybe one head higher, he said. <clears throat> so he had a small little stock room where he could lay inside, but not stand inside and put um, barrels wood barrels that were less than one meter tall, small wood barrels that were may maybe half meter tall, small wooden barrels he got from the Englishman for one coin. <clears throat> he got an old used trade ship from England. That's the story I'm told. Then, and I, don't, I think he's uh, making up stories about how many children he brought along, but he said 25 people. But sometimes it feels like he was uh, going along. So I don't know exactly how many people he brought along on the 10 meter ship. <clears throat> so on the 10 meter long wooden boat without a cabin, it was without a cabin and one mast that was about in the middle and a triangular sail, not a square sail with a red cross on it like many people think. It was a triangular sail and he went, <clears throat> and I'm indifferent to if it's the real story, it's still a cute story and a different way to view history. So maybe you'll get confused by it, Sam Lang, but I, I, I'm indifferent to it because I can't prove it, I wasn't there, but it's still a cute story. So he had a triangular sail that you think looked like a normal uh, ship, but it doesn't do so. It looks a bit like the Hawaiian sails, yeah, a bit like the old Hawaiian uh, triangular sail. They had old, so you can search up old, uh, ships from Hawaii, those were triangular. So that's what they look like. And you can probably find it in the, in the history books of boats, triangular trade ship without a cabin and only a stock. And I don't know if it was, uh, if it had a keel, a different, didn't have a keel, but I'm guessing that it had a wooden keel. Uh, keel, that's the button, button of the ship that's made for making the ship not turn around. And uh, he uh, didn't know if he could go up on a beach, so he never wanted it to go up on a beach, and it was in a port. So he got it, and he lived on it with his with his parents. No, he lived on it with his children that he has uh, made with a woman in Barcelona. He says, and then there wasn't, and he says there was 25, but maybe it's not true. So maybe he just wanted to impress about how many children he ha had back in those days. Maybe it's true. So they lived on the boat and then they decided to go sailing and then they sailed uh, the first trip on the route and I don't know when exactly it was in 1400, 1400 history but it, it can be made more precise on paper and with a timeline and then he went sailing with the barrels filled with bread and milk apparently 
Uh, so you had bread and milk in the barrels, in the small wooden barrels, in the small one meter stock room, and he didn't, and he sometimes he slept in the stock room that wasn't made for humans really. So it was made for humans to sleep on the top, and he didn't have a matting even. And I don't even know if he had a carpet or anything he could put on top of his body. But he slept uh, on the top in summer times at least, and maybe in the stock room at winter time where he couldn't stand up properly. And maybe the rest of the crew did so too, but I don't know uh, how they could fit the uh, barrels in there, wooden barrels in there too. So maybe they put them up on the top of the ship and then slipped inside in the winter time. But then they went sailing and he didn't know how to take the sail down, but he knew how to sail it. And I don't know how he got to know how to sail it because back in those days there wasn't instructors, so he could just figure it out. But the story goes that he didn't know how to, to take the sail down, he said. But maybe he just said it to be impressive in my meditation about and the story about him. But he didn't know how to take the sail down, but he knew how to get it out in the ocean. And he got it out from the port and sailed uh, not to Sicily and not to Africa and not to Italy and not to his hometown. He sailed just in the ocean because he found it was fun just to sail in the ocean. He loved just to sail in the ocean, so he just wanted to stay in the ocean, and he didn't touch land in uh, the um, canal that goes between Egypt and the other Middle Eastern countries that I have to look up on a map, but there's a, a canal that's pretty big uh, that goes out into the, in, into the Indian Ocean, it's called now, I think. So I can't remember the names, I have to look it up on a Google map, but it's near Egypt. And I can't remember if it's Egypt and then Saudi Arabia or something. Uh, that's the two countries that he didn't touch land, where he just sailed through. Uh, where I have no idea how he could sail through, because the wind uh, could stop, so he would just be drifting around and not touching land. So he has been lucky with the wind. And he sailed to India, the story goes, and he visited India. And he had zero clue what people were saying, but the Indians, uh, and we don't know where he landed in India, but the Indians, <clears throat> and he didn't call them Indians, apparently, or maybe they were called Hindu, or maybe it was about Hindu, maybe they called themselves Hindu. I don't know if he even got the name, but apparently it's about Hindu, and then it's called Hindu in Spain, and then it's because people don't pronounce the H, and then it all of a sudden it turned to an Indian to make them sound like they were Hindu and Christian because it was like Ian and it was like Christian or something. I can't figure out. So he went to India and in India he got herbs and he filled up his little bar wooden barrels with herbs and he has no clue about what herbs he got. And he, he didn't get herpes from it at least. And then he decided after getting the herbs that he wanted to sell back. Uh, and I don't know how many barrels he filled with the herbs. Maybe he filled them all with herbs and tried to live from the herbs. Maybe he filled them with bread and just one barrel with herb. Then he sailed back and could figure out how to sail back through that canal once again. That's re really impressive when he didn't have a GPS or a compass and he could just figure out by sensing land and sensing ocean. And then he sailed with the little trade ship little wooden trade ship with a long keel or maybe it has a deep keel but i'm guessing it just had a long keel wooden keel that was a heavy keel or maybe it was a light keel and then it just didn't turn around because there was a small sail triangular sail and then he went and sailed back through the canal from india and it's a simple route just back and forward because he loved to sail in the ocean like many people do and they, but not that much too. Mo most of them stop, <laughs> start, stop at a port or something or at the beach just to chill out uh, and land or something. But he just didn't do so because he loved sailing so much. So he went and could figure out how to sail back to Barcelona in his mind. And he just thought of Barcelona in his mind. And he could figure out the route for Barcelona in his mind. And he sailed back. And we don't know how many days it took. But it took a lot of days because it was a really slow ship. So he sailed back with the herbs, and we don't know how many how many barrels he got. I will specify later on of how many herbs he got and what herbs he got. And the herbs wasn't so impressive to him anyways. 
and he didn't know how to make a tea anyways. So he couldn't really use it for much anyways, and he probably wasn't about eating them anyways. And then they grew a bit and then he ate them anyways, and if he ate them all, well then they didn't come to Spain anyways, so he didn't do so anyways. So then he arrived to Barcelona with watch once again. So it's a story about Barcelona and Catalonia, and he was then living in the boat in Catalonia. And the sail was up the whole time. The sail was up while he was in the and while he was in Barcelona. It never went down. It was always up. You always see them take the sail down. It's only on permanent wing sails to take them down. So he took this the sail down. He didn't do so. He kept it up even in India. It just kept up. Which looks like it's ready for fun and ready to play. But it could also just blow away while he was in on land if it was blowing too much. So then uh, it was too windy, but it didn't do so, and his anchor was small. You, you would, some sailors would want to know if his anchor was small, and it was a tiny little anchor that was too small for the ship, but he had troubles with it, even that it wouldn't grip. But he figured out how to put it places so it wouldn't die, and the boat wouldn't die, but the boat didn't live forever and doesn't exist anymore. So it wasn't such a good boat anyways, people would say. So he went to Barcelona on a long trip with a crew, he says at least two. So it was maybe 25 or something. Maybe it was 22. Maybe it was just 10 or maybe it was five. Maybe you only had three children aboard. We don't know what the real story is. I will specify it later when I ask him about it. He said 25, maybe he was trying to be impressive at making 25 children. And he said it was only his children, but maybe it was not only his children. And then he said his Icelandic kid went to South America but he didn't go to South America before Iceland. So he went to Iceland after South America that some routes on the internet say is uh, the other way around. But now you will hear how I say the route was around. So he went to from Barcelona to Azores, he says. So the real route was from Barcelona and then he sailed to Azores. And he hadn't really talked with the king whatsoever like people said. He had just gotten money for a trade ship, a tiny little wooden trade ship that he wanted to live on. He hadn't talked about where it was land, or if it was on the other hand, on the other hand, if it were east or west, he just went sailing. And the uh, stories about the end of the world and that it was uh, that they didn't know, he didn't know, but uh, he also hadn't heard the stories about that he didn't know. So he just knew that there was ocean and water too. So it didn't look the same for him whatsoever. So he went sailing and loved to sail and he sailed out uh, around Spain and uh, it didn't land in Portugal apparently. He, he didn't go to Portugal uh, to begin with. He just sailed out and didn't go with the current either. It went uh, down to Gran, Gran Canaria and he never went to Gran Canaria. So he went out in the ocean and just stayed out in the ocean and out in the ocean he really found a saurus. And he's maybe the first one to find a saurus and there was no Hindus in a saurus. And I call them Hindus because uh, some call the Guanches Hindus. But they didn't have the Bhagavad Gita, that's the book of the Hindus that I believe, but maybe it's not, maybe it's the book of Buddha. I don't think so either. Maybe it's the Taoist book. They didn't have it. So they called them Hindu and they were redskins. Uh, and the Guanches died in Gran Canaria too. But he didn't find Gran Canaria. didn't talk to the king about Gran Canaria. But he had maybe talked about the Soros too. Right before his death. When he was in prison for six months. But now <clears throat> I'll go back to him finding a Soros. And he didn't talk so much about what he did when he found a Soros. But he found a Soros with his crew. And they let the sail up and they just went to a beach and it was on the south side of the Azores and he's not sure of what island it was because he didn't give them any names. So he just found an island in Azores and went to the south side and if he had gone to the north side it would have been bad times. So he knew not to go to the north side because if he went to the north side uh, he could go on the rocks with the strong currents and all the waves that are always on the Azores. There's always waves on the north side of Azores and strong currents too. So he didn't go there too. So he knew how to survive sailing that nobody had told him about too. So he went to the south beach in Azores and what did he do in Azores? He didn't do anything. 
but he's the first one to figure out a source existed, maybe, which I'm gonna look up who really found the source the first in the 14th century and who made the first house in Azores. <clears throat> so after he had been on the south side of Azores, he went sailing again because he loved sailing with his sail up all the time and the wind came and he decided to sail and he sailed south and he couldn't see land and he didn't see Cape Verde, he just sailed south and he kept on sailing south and he didn't know America, Africa existed whatsoever. But he had seen land like Africa, but he didn't know the land was Africa and he couldn't see the land of Africa and he didn't know what the continent looked like. So he just saw ocean and went south without a compass. And nobody knows what he was thinking about. And all of a sudden it turned too cold. So he wanted to change direction because he was going to Antarctica and it was too cold in the boat and it was freezing. So he had gone all the way, uh, all the way down to a very strong current that goes to the west. Maybe it goes to the east. You will figure out if you look it up. So he went to the west in a strong current near Antarctica and then he said it's too cold. So I want to go up north. So he tried to go up north and he went up north and he went up north. Then he could sense land, but maybe he couldn't sense land, maybe it was the Hindus. So the Hindus, with their Bhagavad Gita Hindu book, was calling him out with the red skin and saying, hey, we got a red skin potato for you. And then he could find land and he didn't go on the beach. He had to swim because he didn't have an extra boat. So this, the crew had to swim with the little anger, being afraid they would go away in the current, but there wasn't a strong current. But in Peru, there's a lot of strong currents. So he was very lucky to find a beach without a strong current. So maybe it was a laguna. So then he swam into the beach and then he went to, met the Redskin Hindus. And then with the Bhagavad Gita book and the Holy Patara. And they didn't say it was a Holy Patara. They just gave him a Patara. And, sh and told them telepathically how to grow a patara in the barrels. So he put dirt in the barrels, uh, which uh, nobody had done before, because he wanted to grow a patara. And it was the Hindus that told him how to grow a patara. The redskin Hindus were telling him in South America how to grow a patara. And he didn't call them that whatsoever. He had no clue what they were called. They were just humans. He just said humans. He met humans on a piece of land and he didn't know what the, he called he didn't call it anything he didn't call it the hindus or the redskins whatsoever and they were not redskins whatsoever <clears throat> so they showed him a batata on a beach or maybe he went into a village and maybe there wasn't a village maybe he just met them and they could apparently sense that he was hungry and didn't have food because he had eaten all the bread and all the milk too so he was just starving in a boat getting cold and it's still pretty cold down in South Peru, uh, if you go uh, in, in such with such a boat too. So then he got the patata and sailed up to Chile. And up in Chile, there wasn't really anything. And I can't remember the story he told about Chile. He said there was nothing really in Chile. So then he sailed down south. So he couldn't, uh, he didn't want to keep on sailing, but he was eating uh, some pataras apparently and then growing pataras in his boat and maybe he filled up all the barrels with dirt or earth he filled the 10 barrels up with earth and there was apparently 10 barrels and he filled up not big barrels there were small barrels he filled them up with earth and didn't put a patata in them, but just the green of the patata so he ate the patata and put the green top into the top of the barrels and then he sailed south once again and i have zero clue how he could sail south once again uh, because the current was against him but he couldn't figure out finding brazil either the story goes or argentina either which many people think that he just found rio de janeiro or something but he didn't do so but he apparently just started thinking of barcelona or something or of azores and then he was thinking about land in a distant place and he could figure out finding it uh, and sailing up north once again, which is difficult with the currents. I don't know if the story is true, but it's very difficult to sail a ship up with all the currents and the winds going in the other direction. 
So you could figure out sailing from Peru and up with a 10 meter ship with a triangular sail that he never took down, that maybe even uh, had some breakages. <clears throat> and I don't know how he could repair them whatsoever. And then he sailed up and found uh, something close to Lisboa. And in Lisboa, he apparently got a girlfriend and made babies with a girlfriend. And they got one potato and he said, it's a holy potato. The uh, humans of South America or the humans of Peru uh, that uh, have a special tra tribe now named too that maybe changed that they can't remember in the 1400 century. They had said to him there was sacred potato apparently uh, telepathically and he believed there was sacred potato but he had zero clue because they couldn't talk to each other and they just gave him a potato and did telepathy how to grow a potato so he believed there was a very sacred sweet potato patata and he called him patata and it's, it's what they say patata and he doesn't have any new he doesn't know if it just means for you patata maybe it just means for you in that language that they just wanted to say for you because he could survive with it so he went to um, Portugal and he found Portugal and he sailed into a bay in Portugal and had sex with a woman and gave them a patata <clears throat> and the patata he taught them how to grow with the green stilk so maybe he didn't even gave them a patata maybe he just gave them a green stilk and he didn't give, even give them a barrel because he kept all the barrels in the boat and there were small barrels in a one meter stock room so he gave them maybe just this, the green stilk that they could grow in the earth so maybe they just got one or maybe they just got two he said just one so the first patata landed in Portugal the first sweet potato landed in Portugal and he made a baby apparently then he sailed then the route says he sailed to Iceland and nobody called it Iceland and he did call it Iceland and he went there in the summertime and it's definitely recorded in his book that he went to Iceland but nobody really knew how his route went so he went to Iceland after Portugal and he believed England was a terrible land and Ireland is a terrible land but he could sense France and England and he believed they those were terrible lands to go to he didn't know why he thought that way but he thought Iceland is a good land and he could send Iceland and he didn't call it Iceland he called it Isla and Isla just mean island and that could sound like Iceland and it turned out to be Iceland but it's not Iceland he went there in summertime and he didn't meet a Viking ship. He met a little uh, tr village uh, tribe that where he didn't specify how the houses looked, but he said they knew how to make bread and they had uh, milk too. So they knew how to make milk and bread. And he got milk and bread and had patatas. And maybe he gave them the stilk from a patata. So maybe they got sweet potato in Iceland from a stilk. From a or from the plant part and not from the root part and I can't figure out what the patara part is but it looks like a root to me uh, so I would say it's the root or something uh, so he didn't give him the root he gave him the top green part so he gave him the green part maybe in Iceland um, he, yes he did so maybe so they got a sweet potato so it's Portugal and uh, Iceland they recall it nowadays that they call them themselves uh, because it says Island and Island uh, turned maybe from Isla to Island uh, because uh, people wanted to be that way in Denmark so it's way just called Isla and then they got confused and called it Island because they liked the land to be the Island and there was many stories about why it was called Island but nobody could really figure it out so that could be the story that they started calling it Isla in uh, Iceland where he met a woman and had sex with a woman he says at least to be impressive and it's not a bad story then so maybe he had sex with a woman and made children with a woman he says with the little tribe and he was there for one month and after one month in the summertime which you don't know it was in the beginning of the summertime or the end of the summertime he decided that it was gonna get cold so he decided to go south and he could feel cold and warm and he liked warm so he went south and he didn't go to Ireland but in Ireland they got uh, to know the patata eventually too so he didn't go to Ireland and the Ireland are pissed off about it 
the Irish are pissed off about it. The English are pissed off that they, that the boat didn't want to go back to England when it was from and built in England. So they're very pissed off about it. But it's only very few who would ever care about that story for real too. But some would get really pissed off that he didn't want to go there too. But maybe it's only one person or something. And I want to make it out that it's all of them. So then he sailed down south and maybe he didn't go to Portugal again because he started thinking of Barcelona. So he went and started thinking of Barcelona from Iceland and maybe he middle landed in Portugal, but it doesn't seem that he did so. Exactly. And I'm trying to think what the real story goes, the real route goes. So he started thought, thinking about Barcelona, <clears throat> and Tarifa didn't even exist apparently, and there wasn't a port, or maybe there was just a castle, and there wasn't any port. So he didn't go to Tarifa like some of the people think. He just sailed, sailed straight, straight through between Africa and Tarifa, and he didn't even see the land of Africa. So then he sailed, uh, and maybe had to uh, uh, um, eat pat uh, just patatas, and maybe he got bread in one of the barrels too. And then the rest was just filled up with patatas that kept on growing in the barrels in the little wooden ship. And he sailed to Barcelona. And in uh, Barcelona, uh, he was uh, up in the age. I don't know if it was 50 or 60, he says, the real story goes. And he wanted to sell this ship for two coins now. And it wasn't gold coins, but you all think it was gold coins. He wanted to sell the ship and the children were living in the ship. But uh, he wanted to sell the ship and not with potatoes. And all the potatoes uh, were grown in the land and very popular. The sweet potato was very popular because it could grow so well just from the green. So people just ate it raw. They didn't know how to cook it. Uh, that uh, became famous how to cook it, um, uh, bake it on a fire. Uh, and there's, there's lots of YouTube videos about sweet potato. So then he uh, wanted to sell the ship for two coins and a Spaniard came and wanted to buy it for one coin. And uh, maybe he got fooled or maybe he wanted another coin from the king. We don't know. He was pretty old at that age, apparently. And then he, he wanted to set, get the king to arrest the man. Who had bought his boat because he only gave him one coin and it's the 1400th century and people uh, didn't know why he did what he did uh, uh, and even me wouldn't react that way i would maybe just give away the boat but i can fully see that he believed that it's a very valuable boat and i don't disagree either and if his people really think about the history some would give him a hundred coins really and the king should give him a hundred coins, but he didn't get a hundred coins, so he could make more, so he could uh, get more ships, and he maybe wouldn't even have to figure out how to make other people navigate whatsoever. He would just know how to navigate one boat, and then he would get the 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 boat he really wanted, and then maybe it would go better, maybe not, and that was the king's ship that the king didn't use apparently, and there was just one security guard making nobody go on the boat. So he wanted two coins, uh, and he was too old to sail anyways. So he went to the king, and he walked from Barcelona to Madrid, and he talked to the king, and he made a court case with the king, and he apparently just went and talked to the king and said, now this, this Spaniard that bought uh, my boat for only one coin, got to get put in prison, he said. And he's just an old sailor that maybe talked that way in Spanish, and maybe it was in Italian or in some sort of Latin. And then the king said to him, no, you gotta go to prison. And then, uh, but he wasn't evil, he says. The king wasn't evil, but he said, you gotta go to prison. But apparently the king had fallen in love with Christopher Columbus. And the king didn't even get to eat a patata because he didn't bring a patata. Uh, but in Barcelona, they knew about patata because they got all the patatas apparently. All, and they grew a lot of patatas. But they don't grow a lot of patatas down at the port. And I haven't seen them grow the sweet patata, but they definitely got a, a lot of sweet patatas back in those days. So the king said, no, you are going to prison. 
And the prison wasn't so bad. It was apparently an open prison and a big room where he always got bread and milk. And he loved bread and milk. It's what he lived on his whole life. And he ate a lot of patata. And maybe he liked bread and milk more. He didn't really want to say so. Yeah, he apparently liked uh, bread and milk more. Maybe he didn't do so. I can't figure it out. They didn't bake the sweet potato bag in those days. So it was a bit like tough bread. He would say it's tough sort of bread that grows itself that it didn't or something. Or maybe it wasn't tough bread. I don't know how we would define it. But uh, but it definitely looked like a bread that just grew itself in, in dirt. <clears throat> and he didn't even wash it uh, with urine either. He just uh, didn't wash it in the ocean either. He just ate them and sort of like dusted them off. And then he just ate them. And but he but he didn't bring it to the king, but the king had fallen in love with him and wanted to talk with him, so he put him in an open prison, uh, where he got bread and and, and milk uh, at, at his last days, and it maybe was his fifty because people didn't live that long in those days, and maybe it was a thirty, uh, and it definitely took a long a, a lot of years to sail those routes. So he just really loved sailing and sailing in the ocean. Uh, and he's maybe the man that loved the most to sail in the ocean because he went on such long routes. So he's definitely one of the men that loved to sail in the ocean the most and be in a sail ship. And then uh, the, he said that the man that bought his boat did suicide because he got put in prison. But maybe he just wanted to be very dramatic and he maybe didn't have a clue what the Spaniard did that bought his boat uh, uh, <clears throat> for one coin. And I would be pretty thankful for one coin anyways. I would think it's pretty advanced I could get one coin after I used it. Because uh, a used boat costs less normally. But I can fully see that that, it, that uh, he believed it had more value. Or he wanted to communicate that it's a great boat. And it has a lot of value. And everybody had to know it's a great boat. Uh, so it got to be paid two coins. But he got put in prison. And he had to talk with the king. And with the king he was talking in prison, and prison wasn't a tough prison. He, it was just an open room where he got to go for walks, and he got food And it, at, at his last six months, he says, of his life. And he didn't get killed in prison, he just died out. And it was a bit like a penitentiary, they say. Maybe it's not called a penitentiary, maybe it's just an elderly care home. So he's in an elderly, a sort of elderly care home that didn't exist back in those days so he's one of the first people to experience an elderly care home they say uh, and uh, he talked with the king but he had zero clue what a source was to and it's apparent only people from Portugal that could that could sort of like sense that he had found land too uh, and then uh, people from Spain figured out later too so he, I don't know exactly what he talked with the king about <clears throat> but he talked Maybe about the potato too. They had six months to talk with each other. I, I, I can specify later what they were exactly talking about. Uh, so that's the real story. He didn't know what people from India was called. He didn't know any other word than patata. He didn't call them anything. He didn't call South America anything. He didn't call Azores anything. He didn't call Portugal anything. Uh, he didn't call Isla, uh, Iceland other than Isla. And he maybe knew the word for land, so he knew uh, the land wasn't the land was Mary Chera Chera, uh, and I don't know what he said back in those days. So it was just humans and and land he found uh, while he was out sailing. And then he died, and he said he wasn't treated badly in his elderly care home that was prison because he wanted the other man to be arrested and put in prison until he paid two coins for the boat. So that's the story. Uh, and then the story is that he has a lot of children and that, and that his children made a lot, a lot of children that are alive today in 2022. So happy new year. <clears throat>